Oh, hello. Welcome to Strawberry Land. Ooh, ah, summertime, my favorite season. Time to enjoy the great outdoors, camping, swimming. And there's not a nicer place to do those things than here in Strawberry Land. <laughs> it sounds like strawberry shortcakes making quite a splash. <laughs> Come on in, Custer. The water's fine. Meow. Don't be such a scaredy cat, Custer. Meow. Oh. <laughs> See, Custer, it's not so bad. <laughs> Custard, you're sorry. I'm so glad you could all drop over for a swim. Thank you for inviting us, Strawberry. <laughs> all my friends are invited in. Why, thank you, Custard. Oh, I almost forgot. I received a telegram from Plum Puddin'. She'll be back in time for our annual camping trip. Why, that's today. Yes, and she's bringing some new friends she met on her travels. Wait till everyone hears about that. I know. Maple Stirrup's waiting outside to take us to the Big Berry Trolley, and we can tell everyone on our way to meet Plum Puddin'. Come on, let's go. like everyone in Strawberry Land is real excited about going camping. <laughs> I hope nothing spoils it for them. Things have been extra nice around here lately. Nobody's seen that crusty old crumb, the peculiar purple pie man of Porcupine Peak. <laughs> Open up. It's me, Sour Grapes. How do I know it's really you? Yes, it is Sour Grapes. Quick, inside. <laughs> What's the matter, Burpee? Did you think I was Strawberry Shortcake coming to... Barry talking? Oh. <laughs> Herbie. Herbie! Why, <laughs> Now, just what are you hiding from? Footprint. Ooh. Monster. Monster! doesn't exist. You'd change your tune if you saw what I saw. Show me, Perpy. It will be my treat to show you this monster of which I speak. 
For I am the peculiar purple pie man of Forcurine Peak. <laughs> trip, I wouldn't miss it for anything. <clears throat> this is my good friend from the land of the magnolias, Peach Blush. My pleasure. And who are you? She doesn't have a name. No one has been able to think of one. Why, you're just the most huggable baby I've ever met. We'll just have to find you a name. Melanie Bell and I are taking care of her. I like you. <laughs> she isn't afraid of strangers or anything. She loves everyone. Do you like camping, little baby? I love camping. What is it? <laughs> You'll soon find out. Come on, Elderberry. Let's go home and unpack. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye. The creature that made this print must be at least 10 feet tall and weigh over 400 pounds. <laughs> this is our secret, Elderberry. We'll come back and do some scientific investigation tomorrow. So, for once in your life, you were right. There is a monster. Hear that, Perpy? Perpy? Perpy! And hear us. There's only one thing to be done about this monster. Yes, sour grapes. Run before it catches us! Quite the contrary, my chicken livered batter beater. We are going to catch it! Oh, ridiculous! I only thought that you might be interested in becoming rich and famous. <laughs> Rich and famous? We'll exhibit the monster all across the country. People will pay a fortune to see a real live monster. You're starting to appeal to my greedy nature. I'll build a trap to catch that monster if it takes me all week. For I am the peculiar purple pie man of Porcupine Peak. Ratatatatatata, ratata. Yeah. Strawberry, why don't you tell us one of your ghost stories? Yeah, come on, Strawberry. A real scary one. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to scare the little baby. Oh, I like stories. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. There's a time to seem to remember When all the ghosts come out to play All the goblins gather together And have a very scary holiday Oh, 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 oh once a year Just about midnight All the ghosts from miles around Try their worst to scare little children Listen close and you can hear their hunting sound What was that? I think they're here You never can tell when a ghost is near Watch your step or you'll disappear <laughs> then the ghosts start searching for someone who they can spook and steal away. They'll tie you up with cobwebs and shadows and take you on their very scary holiday. Tonight! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess we weren't so scary after all. No, you're funny. Oh, look. The first star tonight. The wishing star. Make a wish, little one. I wish that I had a name and a pet, just like all my friends in Strawberry Land. Gosh, I don't think there are any spare pets in Strawberry Land. That's all right. A wish can always come true. morning in Strawberry Land. <laughs> well, it looks like everyone stayed up just a little too late last night. just like it yesterday. It must have been made by a monster. <gasps> Those other tracks must be the baby. <laughs> now, don't you worry, Peach Blush. We'll find her. You are looking at a pure genius, Sour Grapes. What makes you think your contraptions will catch the monster? Just wait and see, Sour Grapes. Ooh! What about bait? Your snake! Your berry bird! Ah! My pies! Your pies? <laughs> hmm, you're right. How big did you say this monster is? Fifteen feet tall, at least. I thought it was more like twenty feet. <laughs> Thirty feet if it's an inch. He's big and bad and ugly. Stands fifty stories high. A magnificent monstrosity will we'll nab him by and by. He's grosser than Godzilla. God bless you, what's inside? Oh, every pound of scaly flesh will we'll make, make up rabbit's rise. Let's see, five thousand pounds at a thousand dollars a pound. Oh, Percy will be rich. For lunch, he gobbles cities. For snacks, he munches cars. Oh, we will be so famous when we put him behind bars. We'll be on the TV. For all the world to see. <laughs> oh, how rich we'll be. <laughs> it will be a divine. On show! Everyone will know that he is all mine! No mine! No mine! No mine! No mine! No mine! His teeth are sharp as daggers! Oh, thanks, let's break the floor! He's frank and savagely frightened, and you, you couldn't, couldn't ask for more! He's catastrophically creepy! A truly savage beast! We'll sell him for a million bucks! Ten million bucks at least! Oh, we'll be unbelievably! Inconceivably! Irretrievably! So very evilly! Downright filthy rich. Well, I'll be your friend. I 
a shortcake. I should have known you two had something to do with this. All we want is to find our little lost friend. Who is that? She doesn't have a name. A likely story, if I ever heard one. I like stories. Get out. Big Boots. Big Boots? <laughs> Big Boots. Come and meet your new friends. Ah! Oh, the monster! <laughs> now I get it. It's not one footprint. It's both feet and his tail. He's really shy. All he wants is someone to love him. I want to keep him. Nothing doing. He's coming with us. <laughs> the monster is ours. Come on, let's take our catch to your place and plan our next move. <laughs> Don't you worry, little baby. We'll get Big Boot back somehow. Well, as it turned out, that monster isn't a monster at all. But that's not going to stop that villainous duo from putting poor little Big Boot in the circus. He couldn't even scare a peanut out of its shell. Come now. How about a nice, big, blood-curdling growl for sour grapes? Hmm. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. oh, not like that. give up. What now? Well, Perpy, we either take him as he is or we put you in the cage. I think we had better get this show on the road. There must be a way out of here. Of course there is. A scientific way. There's our answer. How is that one little plant going to help us get out of this cage, Plum Puddin? With the help of our friend, Mr. Sun. We'll need a little light. Hey, Mr. Sun! We're down here in the woods! Do you think you could give us a little more light down here? I can certainly try. Nothing grows down here because it's too dark. from those bullies. How, Strawberry? Well, it's going to take all of us and all our pets together. Hurry, or we'll miss the Big Berry Trolley to Big Apple City. That's odd. I don't remember these holes being here. Well, don't just stand there. Get us out. Here. There's something vaguely familiar about these holes. That's it. They resemble... Yeah. Giant footprints! Kirby, what do you say? We drop off this pint-sized pygmy and go for the big one! Catch it yourself! I'm taking this one to the circus! Everyone! 
everyone is invited back to my house for a victory celebration! you've traveled through the very wonderful world of Strawberry Land and met Strawberry Shortcake and all her friends, you'll be so happy to know that another whole world of adventure is now available from the Parker Brothers Strawberry Shortcake book series. In each of these ten special stories, the Strawberry Land friends get together for some very exciting adventures. And three of these stories are all about baby Strawberry Shortcake and her friends as much younger, lovable characters. Now hurry and join Strawberry Shortcake on two of her greatest adventures ever. Strawberry Shortcake and the Birthday Surprise and Strawberry Shortcake and Sad Mr. Sun. <laughs> Raspberry Tart couldn't fall asleep. Tomorrow was her birthday, a day that might be the best of the whole year. Raspberry Tart thought about last year. What fun it had been to plan her party with the rest of the kids. And the presents. There had even been a special treat, a new bicycle. But this year, nobody had mentioned a party, and it looked like no one would remember her birthday. She felt sad. What if everyone in Strawberry Land, including Strawberry Shortcake, had forgotten that tomorrow was Raspberry's special day? Raspberry Tart tossed and turned, but she finally fell asleep. Raspberry dreamed a wonderful dream about a big birthday party. All her friends were there. Blueberry Muffin, Orange Blossom, Angel Cake, Lemon Meringue, and of course, Strawberry Shortcake. They had all come to her party, and they had even brought their pets. Everyone gave her a present, and streamers and laughter swirled everywhere. But in the morning, when Raspberry Tart woke up, her house was very quiet. 
Raspberry hummed a special cheer-up song she knew. But nobody came to wish her a happy birthday. Well, Raspberry finally said out loud, if no one will come to visit me, I will just have to go to visit them. Raspberry Tart dialed Blueberry Muffin's number. Hello, Blueberry, she said. Can I play with you and Cheesecake today? I can't play today, answered Blueberry Muffin. I have pies to bake. Raspberry Tart next called on Orange Blossom. Hello, Orange Blossom, she said. Could you meet me at the park today? Orange Blossom answered. I'd like to, but I can't. I have to finish painting an important picture by three o'clock. If I go out to play, my painting won't get done. Oh, all right then, Raspberry answered in a sharp voice. I'm sure that I can find someone who isn't so very busy to play with me. And she quickly hung up. Raspberry Tart knew that sometimes you have better luck just going to a friend's house instead of phoning first. So she put on her hat and walked out the front door. Rhubarb went with her. They walked down the road until they came to Angel Cake's house. Raspberry Tart knocked, and Angel Cake came to the door. Would you like to come to the park with us? Raspberry asked. Oh, thank you very much, but I just can't today. Raspberry Tart was very disappointed. Who cares about that little Angel Cake anyway, she thought. I'll find someone better to play with. With rhubarb at her side, Raspberry went straight to Lemon Meringue's house. She called to her from the front walk. Would you like to play with us in the park? I would like to, but I must wash my hair so that it will look pretty at the special party I am going to. Maybe I can play tomorrow. It isn't fair, Raspberry said to Rhubarb. Why should Lemon get to go to a party when it's my birthday? I'm the one who should be going to a party. Oh, why didn't anyone remember? She thought she would try one more place, but when she got to Huckleberry Pie's house, there was a big sign on the door. Gone fishing with strawberry shortcake. Raspberry Tart sat down on Huckleberry Pie's front porch and began to cry. As she cried, she thought to herself, I will always remember how everybody forgot my birthday. They will be sorry that they were so mean to me. Raspberry Tart turned to Rhubarb Monkey and spoke in a firm voice. You and I, we're going to have our own party in the park. We'll make a mud pie and seed cake. We will not invite the other kids, but we will ask some birds to share it with us. The birds can sing happy birthday, then we can climb some trees and look at their babies. Rhubarb smiled and clapped his hands and off they went. Raspberry Tart and Rhubarb Monkey had their party with the birds. Then they went to find a good tree to climb. Rhubarb Monkey climbed quickly and easily. When he spotted a pretty nest with two baby birds in it, he motioned to Raspberry Tart. There are two babies in this nest. Come and see them. Raspberry Tart started up the tree, but she did not get very far. When she was only a few feet from the ground, she lost her footing and fell with a thump. Although she was not hurt, Raspberry wanted to leave the park. She had had enough tree climbing. Everything seemed to be going wrong today. As Raspberry and Rhubarb walked home, they passed a store. Rhubarb, announced Raspberry Tart. I know that nobody else is going to give me a present, so I will give myself one. It will cheer me up. Raspberry Tart looked at pretty necklaces and pins. Finally, she chose a seashell bracelet. All the way home, Raspberry Tart looked at her beautiful new bracelet. She was pleased with it. It did make her feel a little better. This has been a long, long day, said Raspberry as they came to her house. I think that I will go to my room and take a little nap. As she walked up to her front door, it opened slowly. There stood Strawberry Shortcake with a big smile and a bunch of flowers. Happy birthday, she sang. 
When Raspberry Tart walked inside, there was an even bigger surprise. All her friends were in the living room, and in the corner was a heap of presents. What a lucky girl I am, thought Raspberry Tart. I thought that everyone had forgotten me, but now I see that they were really trying to surprise me. Friends don't usually forget each other's special days. Strawberry Shortcake took charge. She called everyone to the table. It was time for the birthday cake. After everyone sang happy birthday, Raspberry Tart blew out the candles. Raspberry Tart opened all her presents. Then the kids all hunted for peanuts. They pinned the tail on the donkey. They had a balloon blowing contest. Finally, Strawberry Shortcake said, I have a poem for you. Here it is. A day that's special, just for you. Your birthday is here, and we are too. Together we sing, together we play, together we celebrate your special day. When the party was over, Raspberry Tart stood at the door and waved goodbye to most of her friends. The day was almost over, but there was one more special treat. For Strawberry Shortcake had decided to sleep over that night. As she snuggled under her blankets, Raspberry Tart thought about her day. She smiled and felt like the happiest girl in Strawberry Land. Happy birthday, Raspberry Tart, and good night. summer morning, Mr. Sun woke up full of the grumps. He had shone brightly for days and days, but the strawberry kids had been so busy planting their berries that not one of them had stopped to talk to him or to say thank you for the lovely weather. Mr. Sun felt that nobody liked him anymore. Rise and shine, called a passing breeze. Why should I, grumbled the sun. Nobody cares if I shine or not. He closed his eyes and went back to sleep. Every day Mr. Sun got up later and went down earlier. He chased the sunbeams away and let the little gray clouds cover him up. In Strawberry Land, it grew colder each day. Strawberry Shortcake shivered. The days are so short. The sun doesn't shine into our valley now, she said to Custard. My poor strawberries aren't turning red. She went to see her neighbor, Huckleberry Pie, and his dog, Pupcake. Huckleberry was snoozing by the strawberry soda stream, his fishing pole beside him. Strawberry woke him up. It's too cold. We must do something, she said. I did something, Huckleberry said. I put three sweaters on. Let's go talk to Blueberry Muffin, Strawberry suggested. Okay, said Huckleberry, closing his eyes. Well, let's go, Strawberry said. Now? asked Huckleberry. You mean today? He got up slowly. They went to see Strawberry's best friend, Blueberry Muffin. It's so cold, I have goosebumps, Blueberry told them. Some of my blueberries are turning ice blue and shrinking from all this cold. If it doesn't get warmer, we won't have a berry crop this year, Strawberry said. I wonder if this could be one of the Purple Pie Man's tricks. The kids decided to hike up to the home of the Purple Pie Man, who liked to steal the kids' berries for his pies. 
Carefully, they crept close to the pie man's palace. They saw that the purple pie man was blowing up a big balloon with a pump. Two more balloons were tied to tall weeds. They heard the pie man say, This is my last balloon, but three should be enough. Won't those kids be surprised on their way to market? When I tie these balloons to the berry cart, their whole crop will fly off with me to Porcupine Peak. Heh, heh, heh. He tied up the last balloon and said, Now I'll look through my telescope and see how those berries are doing. I hope they are growing in this cold weather. We'll put a stop to his silly scheme, Strawberry said. The kids ran to the balloons and started to untie them. Two balloons floated high in the sky. They untied the last balloon just as the purple pie man came running. Stop, he cried. I see what you are up to. You will ruin my lovely, naughty plan. The kids ran in all directions, and the last balloon string got caught in a sticklebur bush. Quick, over here, Strawberry called. The other kids joined her, and they all climbed up a bittersweet vine growing on a tree. They hid until the purple pie man gave up hunting for them. That was close, Blueberry said. Well, we stopped the pie man's plan, said Strawberry, but we still don't know why the sun isn't coming to visit us anymore. Maybe it's too much work, Huckleberry said, yawning. Blueberry said, Maybe the sun doesn't know just how much we need him. Then we'll have to let him know, Strawberry exclaimed. It can't be done, said Raspberry Tart. Mr. Sun is too far away, and he's hiding behind all those clouds. But Strawberry didn't believe in it can't be done. We'll ask Orange Blossom to write a letter, she said. Orange Blossom was indoors. Her walls were covered with beautiful pictures that she had painted. They talked about the cold and the balloons and everything. Orange Blossom said, Me do the letter? Somebody else could do it better, but I'll try. Strawberry said, I know what we can write the letter on. She led them to a valentine tree with big heart-shaped leaves. When Mr. Sun sees this big heart, he'll know we love him, she said. They all pulled on a leaf while Custard and Pupcake chewed on the stem. The leaf broke off suddenly and everyone fell down. They took the leaf back to Orange Blossom's cottage. She dipped her pen in a jar of concentrated blueberry juice. What shall I write? she asked. Strawberry closed her eyes to think hard and said, Begin like this. For days and days, we've missed your warm rays. She looked at Blueberry, who added, We thank you, dear son, for all that you've done. Orange Blossom suggested shyly, It's been a trial. And Huckleberry shouted, Come back and we'll smile. Orange Blossom signed it. With love from your friends in Strawberry Land. She made pictures all around it with strawberry and apricot and lime juice. Doesn't that smell good? Blueberry said. Strawberry said, It needs one more thing. Mint Tulip can help us. Mint Tulip was in her flower garden looking worried. My poor Johnny Jump Ups are drooping down, she said. My morning glories don't open up until the afternoon, and my four o'clocks sleep all day. Strawberry said, We are sending a letter to tell the sun how much we need him. A rosebud on it would look and smell so pretty. There was one beautiful pink rosebud left. Now what will make it stick to the leaf? Strawberry asked. That's easy, said Blueberry Muffin, looking down at some spots on her apron. I had a lettuce and honey sandwich this noon. Honey is awfully sticky. Mint Tulip attached the rosebud to the leaf. The letter was ready. But how can 
we get it to the sun, Huckleberry said. Balloons go up, Orange Blossom said so softly that no one heard. The Strawberry Kids paced back and forth, thinking hard. Orange Blossom kept whispering, Balloons go up. Balloons? That's it, Orange Blossom, Strawberry said, giving her a hug. They found the balloon still stuck in the stickleburg bush. They made sure that the pie man wasn't around. Then Strawberry stood on Huckleberry's shoulders and reached for the balloon string. Don't get stuck on the stickleburr, Huckleberry yelled. I don't know how we get you off it. Little by little, Strawberry pulled the balloon string away from the stickleburr and carefully tied it to the end of the stem of the leaf letter. The whole string came off the stickleburr suddenly while Strawberry was still holding on to it. Up, up, up in the air went the balloon. Up, up, up in the air went Strawberry. Help! Oh, help! Strawberry screamed. Lucky Bug flew off to get a breeze to rescue her. The breeze huffed and pushed the balloon near the ground, but the balloon bounced around and bobbed this way and that. Strawberry, catch my fishing line, Huckleberry yelled. He cast the line as high as he could. Strawberry caught it. All the kids helped get her down on the ground. Oh, my! I feel all skitter-scattered, Strawberry said. The balloon sailed away high in the sky. Soon they couldn't see it anymore. Do you think it would reach the sun? Orange Blossom whispered. We all have to wish hard, Strawberry said. The Strawberry Kids held hands in a circle and wished with all their might. The balloon floated up through the little gray clouds high over the world. As it neared the sun, it grew hotter and hotter. Finally, it exploded pop before it got to Mr. Sun. The leaf began to flutter back down toward the world. Mr. Sun took a deep breath and bellowed, Bring me that heart-shaped note. A little breeze brought the leaf to him. It says, thank you. Nobody has said that to me before, said Mr. Sun. It says they need me. It says love from my friends. And it's all on a beautiful heart. Oh my, I feel so warm all over. The next morning, Mr. Sun rose early. He told the little gray clouds to go away, and he sailed as fast as he could to the sky over Strawberry Land. He shone down all day, making everyone warm and cozy. The berries and flowers quickly perked up and began to grow. All the Strawberry Kids had a sunshine party. A cloud rained a gentle rain, just enough so the berries and flowers had a refreshing drink of water. Even while it rained, the sun kept on shining. Look, Orange Blossom said, did you ever see such a beautiful rainbow? I think, said Strawberry Shortcake, that lovely things usually happen when we remember to say thanks.
house warming party. All her new friends will be there. Mint tulip and marshmallow, crepe Suzette and eclair, almond tea and marza panda, cafe au lait and burrito. The English twins, Laminata, and their pet, Sugar Woofer. <laughs> oh, even that peculiar purple pie man won't be able to spoil the fun. Be sure to watch Strawberry Shortcake's housewarming surprise. Hey, you're all invited to join Strawberry Shortcake and her friends for Pets on Parade. The Strawberry Land kids have darling little pets to enter in the great pet contest. Purple Pie Man and a mischievous partner will be there too. Together they try to snatch first prize. But they can't keep Miss Strawberry down for long. Be sure to watch Strawberry Shortcake in Pets on Parade. It's the berries. I won't do it. I won't. You have to, Kevin. No, I won't. You'll see. Kevin. I just don't care. The Care Bears are back. Now they must save Kevin from the clutches of the cruel Professor Coldheart, who lives deep inside the land without feelings. Come along with the Care Bears in this delightful tale of loving, sharing, and of course, caring. The Care Bears care. They care a lot about you. Can keep you warm at night. come when I must go forth and seek my father. You alone can tell me where to find him. Do not go, Hiawatha. Your father, Magikowis, has great cunning and powerful magic that can destroy you. I, too, have power and strength and cunning, Nokomis. I fear him not, but I must see him face to face. Tell me the way. It is a long, hard way. Across a river greater than any in the land. Across huge grasslands and deserts and into mountains so high that the clouds cannot climb their peaks. of the one thing I wished most to hear. Why did you never return when Winona, my mother, died? Did you not know that I wished to be near you? 
Can you not understand that I am not like mortal men, O Hiawatha? The master of life has laid upon me tasks that force me to leave your mother and do what I had to do. You speak nothing but empty words, but words are not enough to escape your responsibility. Old Hiawatha, mighty warrior that you are, you cannot overwhelm me. Father, I am sorry. I don't know what came over me. A son does not attack his own father, and yet... Be not sorry, Hiawatha. It was I who put it into your heart to attack me. I had to do it to test your strength and courage. And I am well pleased with you. You are a fine warrior. But now, from my lips, learn your true destiny. shall go to the palace and slay this cruel beast. Neither beauty nor father shall be sacrificed. No. I am the cause of our woe, so I must surrender myself to the beast. Now, take my hand. Be as true-hearted as you are beautiful, and we both shall have nothing left to wish for. Beast, you know why we have come. Show yourself if you dare. brother's attempt to rescue her, though she thought of her family often as the weeks and months went by. Within the palace walls, time seemed to stand still, but beauty could watch the march of the seasons from its towers. Yet her months of captivity passed quickly, for there was always some new miracle, some new wonder to behold, and every night there was dinner with the beast. Do you love me yet, beauty? Will you marry me? came spring, and spring gave way to summer. And though beauty was enthralled by the palace and its enchantments, she looked forward most of all to her nightly visits with the beast. She had come to enjoy his company and his conversation. Over time, her pity for the creature had turned to compassion, and her compassion to fondness. But still, it was not love 